What up, pilots? It's Archon Tay up in this mud. Here is our finished Razorwing jet fighter. Got some nice body work done. Painted up the canopy, make it look nice and green and evil. And um, I actually decided not to paint the insides black. I kind of like the all green look. It looks a little bit more alien and otherworldly. So. The uh, paints you're gonna need. What are you gonna need? You're gonna need some of this. Tamiya Clear Green, baby! This is what's gonna give your um, canopy that shiny, glossy green color. Just like the red does with blood. For the paintwork, corn red, Mephiston red, Wild Rider red, and then Abaddon Black to clean up the lines and any mistakes you make. I primarily copied the Games Workshop website, but um, you can really do anything you want. And I also would use transfers like on the wings and on the tail here, but I don't. I, I, I didn't get any with this kit. I only got the um, the model when my client gave it to me. So I don't know. What do you think? You could add. Some more. You could even add some some red coming up here if you wanted. But uh, the, the Games Workshop website example really has just this these two slashes with the uh, um, crisscrossing ones on the wing. This weird snaking design um, around the cockpit, and then just like transfers around. So, anyways, I hope you guys like it. And this was a lot of fun to paint. So uh, check out the rest of my Razor Wing Jet Fighter videos if you haven't seen them yet. And happy playing and painting and dice rolling. Pew pew pew! All right, players, we are going to finish our Razor Wing Jet Fighter. So first we're gonna start with the cockpit and um, we are going to do something different from the Games Workshop color scheme. So this is up to you whether or not you want to do it, but uh, I think it might look cool. I actually saw my good buddy over at the Tabletop Painting 101. Howard did this and it is just amazing. So we are going to use some Tamiya Clear Green up in this mod. That's right, Clear Green X25. And we are going to paint that over the cockpit. now. If I had an airbrush, and if I had not glued this on yet, mmm, smells good. It smells like alcohol mixed with like some kind of berry. Mmm. Now you want to be careful if you're hand painting this stuff on, just like with the Tamir Clear Red, which we use for our blood effects. Um, you want to clean your brush off thoroughly afterwards, and. We are just going to thin it down a little bit, Put some water, and then we are going to apply it by brush rather than airbrush to the cockpit. Get some lint on it. All right, here we go. Yeah, I'm going to thin it down a little bit too much with some water, but. Oh, that's cool. Kind of looks almost yellowy. So I'm gonna add a little bit more clear green to my brush. That's that's the stuff. It has this really awesome neon green. So again, I got this from my good friend's channel, Tabletop Painting 101. Definitely check it out. He is a professional commissioned painter sponsored by Tamiya. Just really great guy, so helpful. He's helped me out a lot and um, I'm always talking to him on Skype. It looks almost like a, I don't know, like a GI Joe, like a Cobra, Cobra Commander type deal. Oh, it does, even with the pilots. Shiny Cobra Commander helmet. So he does it by actually using an airbrush, and that would be more effective. The coverage is a lot easier 
I'm having to go by hand and make sure that I just, you know, thin it down enough so that it doesn't get all clumpy. And even now I can tell that it's it's looking a little bit streaky, but for, you know, for our purposes, it's, it's pretty, it looks pretty nice, right? We're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna come back and do some, some um, painting of the, we're gonna paint the little bits and pieces of it black to match. Maybe, I don't know, that, that is actually, that actually looks pretty nice all by itself. That does not look half bad. That looks so good, I'm gonna do it on my Viper. Not Viper, what am I talking about, my Venom. I know it's a razor wing tutorial, but um, I just have to do it because this clear green is so awesome. Hey master, I was wondering, oh. Oh, that's nice, Master. I know, isn't that cool? That's very pretty. Hey, Warboss T! Have you seen it? Oh. Look, Lewis. Tamiya Clear Green. It's beautiful. It's the most beautiful green I've ever seen. Lewis, what happened to you? I talk like this now because I'm an old man. Reminds me of the uh, Lego plastic green canopies. Super awesome! All right. Wow, that's wow, that's doing. Let's. I'm gonna put my jet fighter onto this uh, my my little cork. Oh, he said I'm gonna put it on my little cork. Secured by the missiles. And actually, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna paint some red body paint kind of slick our guy up so he's got some individual markings because you know the dark Eldar pilots are so proud and haughty and all that stuff so we're gonna start with corn red and I'm gonna try to copy most of the color schemes you see on the Games Workshop product page, placement and all that stuff. So, like always, use your wet palette to thin down the paint so that you're not slapping paint onto the wings where it's gonna dry up all clumpy-like. And after thinning it down, wipe off most of it on a Kleenex and you are ready to begin. So I'm gonna start with the wing tip. Oh. Come on, cork. Oh. Napkins. Oh, my canopy. What is going on? Alright. Because this thing is much bigger than your venom, it's more important to make the design as precise as possible. Sharp, lots of sharp edges.
just our first coat so we can it's too much so we can not have to worry about coverage too much we don't want to just like I said be too over enthusiastic with the how much paint we slap on I think as long as you follow the general curve and the shape of the wings, it's a safe bet. Any mistake can be cleaned up with some Abaddon Black, so don't be afraid to experiment. In fact, I suggest experimenting as much as possible with this color scheme because it's really up to you. What works for my razor wing might not work for yours. You might want to do a slightly different pattern. So. They do whatever you want, but that I think this looks pretty good, don't you? Lewis, Igor. Oh, what? Well. Sorry, we stopped paying attention ever since you stopped using the Tamiya Clear Green. There is no reason for us to watch you painting anymore. Because now it's just a regular boring old tutorial. I don't know how I feel about your new voice, Lewis. Get off my lawn! Okay, so I was looking at the first picture on the Games Workshop website and I was like, yeah, it looks. That, that, that doesn't look too hard to paint. And then I looked at the second picture that shows the bodywork by the canopy, and then I was like, whoa! This is gonna be a little bit more challenging. So, check out the, uh, the artwork on Games Workshop's website, and tell me that that is not going to be pretty challenging to do. Alright, let's stop stop whining! Stop complaining and just paint it already! Carl Franz! What are you doing here? Ever since you abandoned the Empire, I've had no troops to fight my glorious wars. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I I didn't abandon you. I just got caught up with other projects. You are weak. You lack discipline. So are you just going to crash here at my place until I start painting more Empire troops? Yeah! 
Hmm. Dude, where are your pants? Don't worry about my pants. You don't need to know about where my pants are right now. This is really a bad angle to show you, I'm sorry. Hey you guys, I think, I'm not sure, but I think I might have lost the last clip where I cleaned up the design here with some black. And if, if I did, then just take some, some black, like Abaddon Black here or Chaos Black. And um, if you feel like your design is getting too big and sloppy, then just use that to clean up the sides. My camera, sometimes it, everything is going fine with it, and sometimes it's just doesn't want to, doesn't want to cooperate. <sighs> okay, so, let's see if we can finish this design. There are some uh, great free-handing guides and tutorials out there. As you can see, my style is very, very just guerrilla style. Go in there and paint the design. I know some people who paint little guide dots. In fact, I think even White Dwarf suggested doing guide, um, like painting little dots on where you want your paint to go and then doing like a connect the dots kind of thing. And that, you know, that's fine too. I think it's, it really just depends on what, you know, what you're comfortable with. As with all things painting related. You just do what works for you. White Dwarf Painter has like, or this heavy metal, whoever painted this has like no respect for lines. Like he paints like right on to, oh! Ah, be quiet! Right onto the cockpit. So we'll, we'll do, we'll do a little bit of that. The only thing is once you get paint up there, can't really fix it. So you want to just be sure that that's, that's what you want.
personally, I think it's cool if you just have like a, you just need a good fine tipped brush to give you that nice little tip of your design. So let me show you what I mean by uh, using black to clean. So you can see right here, I kind of painted these two red slashes a little bit close together. So I'm going to take a little bit of Abaddon black right now. And I'm just going to paint a nice thin line right down the middle. Design up just a little bit, and there, like that. The dark elder are so distinct from their craft world cousins in that. They have these crazy intricate designs. I think the only comparable thing are the BL10 thorns, you know what I mean? That kind of compare to these crazy, crazy designs. So I'm actually I didn't get any transfers with this, but if you want, you could also put transfers on the wings and on the tail and oh the tail. Where did I put it? Igor, this monster. Can you see my dark Eldar razor wing tail? Oh right here, monster. I was using the end to pick pieces of meat out of my teeth. Whew! Thank goodness. Alright, so now let's move on to some Mephiston Red. We're going to do a little bit of highlighting. All these thin red markings are... very fun to paint, but very taxing on your eyeballs. Oh, I just watched the thin red line again. Since I was... Since I saw it as a kid. That's a crazy movie, man. I remember going to see it in the theaters, thinking... Oh, cool! John Travolta from Pulp Fiction is in this. And then he's in like... In for like one minute and never seen again. And then you see George Clooney at the end, and you're like, oh, George Clooney's in this, yeah, it's gonna get awesome. And then the movie ends, and you're like, what? So many famous people in that movie. And I heard they even filmed, but they didn't put in other scenes with really famous actors, like cameo scenes that really wanted to work with the director. So they filmed these scenes, but they ended up not using them because the movie was too long. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like Gary Oldman. I think Bill Pullman, too. And um, yeah, like all these other great actors.
some of you might remember this movie called Wind Talkers by, I think it was, was it John Woo did that, I believe. No, did he? I don't know. Nicolas Cage was in it, though. It's called Wind Talkers. They filmed it here in Hawaii, and I got to be an extra in it. Some of the Japanese soldiers. Because I'm Asian. And, um... That was so much fun. It was like, like being a little kid again and playing cowboys and Indians, but with um, prop guns and stuff. It was so cool. Every time they shot at action, and we'd run up the hill screaming, and the mortars would be going off, and they'd have like these ex these these uh, explosive charges, and would tell all the would tell all the actors, all the um, all the extras. Please note where the flags are on the ground in the run through. We're gonna run it once and not detonate any of the charges. And then when we film, we're gonna take the flags out of the ground so that the only thing that is gonna mark the flags or mark where the explosive charges are are these little ribbons and once we start filming please do not come near the ribbons it's very dangerous when these explosive charges go off and I was like whoa what so cool so we're running the rehearsal right and everybody's like I was part of the group that is like reinforcing the the main line so I'm running up the hill, and I'm screaming in pseudo-Japanese. And, I mean, I'm Japanese, but I don't, I'm half Japanese, but I don't speak it. And <laughs> the first time I run up the hill, first time I'm running up the hill, I'm, um, I'm like, just, Kind of mildly aware of where all the explosive charges are because you can see the flags so it's like really easy to see oh okay i'll just really avoid this one area and then and they're like okay that was a good run through we're gonna reset and this time we're gonna do it for real we're gonna remove the flags so please remember don't get blowed up and i was like what and then I had to think, oh shoot, where, where were those charges? It was very stressful. What a fun, awesome experience though. I never, it made me realize that I never ever want to go to war, but I always, always want to go to film war movies. <laughs> so much fun. I kind of didn't like having to wake up so early in the morning, but man, it was like a huge war scene. It was this is back when they used to blow bank on on uh, on big set pieces. So when I came charging up the hill, the minute I would look over and see like all the hundreds of American extras that they got. And I'd look down the line of the trench and see all the hundreds of Japanese extras. I'd be like, this is so awesome. And there were these these replica tanks. I don't know if they were replica or real. And just um, or or just like dressed up as to look like authentic World War II Pacific Theater tanks. And they were rumbling along and I was like, oh my god. 
This is flipping awesome. So if you feel like the orange is a little too bright, just go back down to Mephiston Red, which is what I'm going to do right now. Just for this one part, it feels a little bit garish. Mr. garish Um. Yeah, there's this one guy that kind of segregated us like racists. They kept us separated. Not like racists. <laughs> It wasn't racist. I mean, seriously, we had to stay with our group, so we couldn't really go mingling with the American soldiers because we were on two opposite, completely opposite ends of the battlefield. And I remember um, we, w we would always go in to eat after the Americans and into the mess hall tent, or the catering tent. And when the Americans were clearing out and we'd be getting ready to go in, there was this one extra who looked and sounded exactly like Chris Farley. And he would do the Chris Farley impression. The uh, in a van down by the lake impression. And he'd be like, American soldiers, companies B through F, please report to the trailer down by the lake. <laughs> this guy's awesome, he had the physicality and everything. All right, players, look at how the time flies. We are done with <laughs> our razor wing. So, a little bit of tattoos, the green canopy. I mean, from the beginning of the video to the end, you can see just how much of a difference it's made. I would do some uh, transfer work up here, but I've decided that I'm not going to. So what I'm gonna do is, because you've stayed with me this whole time, you were so diligent and good, I am going to show you what this baby looks like all put together right now. I just realized you're probably going to have seen it anyway because you're here from the beginning of the video. I'm just going to leave it up to the client whether or not he wants to um, glue it permanently. You can take it off and transport it in a little flatter container. Huh, it's not sticking. Wish not sticky icking. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna force it. Anyways, finished jet ra uh, razor wing jet fighter. It's actually gonna be used as a void raven bomber, but um, I guess there's no kit for it, so we have no idea what a void bomb looks like or anything like that. But this is as close to my interpretation of the Games Workshop standard that I can make it. And yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one. What up, pilots? It's Archon Tay up in this mud. Here is our finished Razor Wing Jet Fighter. Got some nice body work done. Painted up the canopy, make it look nice and green and evil. And um, I actually decided not to paint the insides black. I kind of like the all green look. It looks a little bit more alien and otherworldly. So, the uh, paints you're gonna need. What are you gonna need? You're gonna need some of this. Tamiya Clear Green, baby! This is what's gonna give your um, canopy that shiny, glossy green color. Just like the red does with blood. For the paintwork, corn red, Mephiston red, Wild Rider Red, and then Abaddon Black to clean up the lines and any mistakes you make. I primarily copy the Games Workshop website, but um, you can really do anything you want. And I also would use transfers, like on the wings and on the tail here, but I don't, I, I, I didn't get any with this kit. I only got the, um, the model when my client gave it to me. So, I don't know, what do you think? You could add some more. You could even add some, some red coming up here if you wanted, but uh, the, the Games Workshop website example really has just this these two slashes with the uh, um, crisscrossing ones on the wing, this weird snaking design um, around the cockpit, and then just like transfers around. So anyways, I hope you guys like it. And this was a lot of fun to paint. So uh, check out the rest of my Razor Wing Jet Fighter videos if you haven't seen them yet. And 
happy playing and painting and dice rolling. Pew pew pew!